Hello, good evening. Welcome to another Team Email show for weekly viewing. We've got the start of the NBL season after a lot of anticipation, and I'm really excited to see Greg on the show. I, I was it, really great seeing you in the BBL last year, bit, and it's great to see your development going. How have you been? How's this week been? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Really good. Um, yeah, we've had a good week. Um, had a last practice yesterday. Uh, obviously, only practicing two twice a week. Now I'm back at home in Manchester. Um, but no, we've had a good productive two days of practice and we're ready to to play this weekend. Yeah, obviously you guys had a bit of prep in the last week for the kitchen trophy. How was that for you guys? Has been the, the newly promoted side that's obviously a top derby side and a really experienced Bradford side. How was that experience for you guys? No, I think it was great. Uh, the kicking trophy allowed us to kind of find our feet a bit um, with regards to like, obviously being back in, back in Division 1 and allowing the guys who were playing D2 last year to get a feel for the game in Division 1 again. Um, and also playing against uh, teams like Derby and, and Bradford are two, are two teams that are going to be competitive in the league this year. So it was good to see kind of how we match up against them guys as well. So it was good. And we were talking before we came on there about how nice it is for you to come home. How's that adjustment been? Has it been quite smooth? You obviously know the area quite well. well what's the insight been for you? No, yeah, it's been really smooth. Um, it's been nice just to be able to be around family and stuff, like having all the home comforts and that, and also um, be back at Magic and, and seeing all my old coaches and a few of my old teammates that I'm now playing again with. So, yeah, it's, it's been a really good transition, I think, and um, I'm really looking forward to playing with these guys this season and I'm just looking forward to being back in front of uh, my family and being able to play in front of them every week and being back in back just back home in Manchester, really. I think the only disappointment from my perspective is that watching the Kit King trophy, there wasn't as much anticipation, wasn't much live stream. So for me, I'm really excited with the teams having to stream more games to get to watch yeah. how you guys get on. For those who don't know the Manchester team who might not follow the D2, who are some of the guys to look out for? What are some of those personalities like as well as what their skills on the court would be? Um, yeah, we've got we've got a really good group of guys this year, I think. Uh, on and off the court, we've just got a really good group of guys. Um a few guys to look out for, um, bar obviously myself. Um, we have uh, Andre Gale, who who has spent some time in the BBL, and he was big for the Magic D2 team last year. Um, Tyrell Brown, who played really well in the uh, in the final for, for Magic last year and was really solid for, for Magic for the whole of the D2 season last year. Really good defensively. And also um, Ben Brown, an up-and-coming talent in, um, in, basketball, in basketball England and um, someone who who could make have a few big performances this year in Division One and really have a good year? Yeah, I was a shout out to those guys who do the video clips. I've definitely seen a few clips of Ben Brown going on like the rated GB or Hoot Six. There's definitely those clips out there. It's great. How you know for you? Obviously, the last time you saw you in the NBL was with Loughborough, but you went to Leicester. How was that as a sort of a development for your side, having that little bit of experience being in and around the BBL side last year? No, I think I've, I've said this before in the past. It was I feel like I really, really, really enjoyed my time at, uh, in Leicester with regards to just uh, obviously being at Charmwood for three years and then also getting the opportunity to be with the B Division One team and also with the BBL team. Um, again, I feel like I gained a lot of experience. I got to be around the BBL guys every day. So obviously they practiced every day. So I was at their practice every day and I was also at Loughborough practice every day. So it was a lot of basketball being played and obviously the, t the schedule was pretty tough having multiple games every weekend. Sometimes if I'd play three games in a weekend, um, which is pretty tough. But being able to learn from the guys in Leicester, um, I think was great. Um, my third year at Charmwood, being able to learn from from Kyle Jimenez and some of the older guys like Jonas and Harrison on the Loughborough team. And also being able to learn from some of the more experienced guys like Gino and, uh, and Connor on the on the BBL team as well. Some like really, really high, high level and talented players. So yeah, great for my development, I think. Yeah, obviously Kyle's now in the BBL of, uh, actually forget the name now, the Gladiators after they change oh, names, but you will see a few of the former guys like Jonas at Derby, Andre also a little bit part of the, the programme at Worthing. Have you spoken to any of his pros coming back and what are you expect from this season as being on the opposition side? Um, yeah, I feel like I just, we, we expect the same thing as we get from them every single year like really really all really solid guys I feel like Loughborough do a great job at, at 
creating pros like professional basketball players uh, and they do a really good job at that and do it at a high level as well um Jonas obviously really really solid player he can get hot quick from the three point line Andre is like a really good all around great defender can also put up big numbers and hopefully I really I really look forward to seeing how Kyle does in the BBL this year finally getting the opportunity to step up and, and play in the BBL this year so I'm really excited for him and uh, I'll definitely be watching a lot of his games this year as well yeah, the, the BBL dropped the games on Sky. YouTube is so easy to watch. It's going to be great to watch. And obviously, we touched on it earlier, the NBL. Just announced that obviously, NBL lies back in dead. So that's really good. And most teams have signed up to this idea, but at least five games will be streamed, which definitely gets us to see more games on yeah. air. And let's say I'm really excited this weekend. You guys got a double header, really yeah. tough double header. I don't think you get much tougher, especially if you're on the road. I think TBC Saturday, Derby Sunday. How have you guys been prepared for double header as your way sort of baptism is a fire really D1? Yeah, um I think we've just been taking it like one team, we're gonna be taking it one team at a time. Um trying to trying to get through um TBC first. Um on Saturday away game, like first game of the regular season is a really tough opponent to to be playing against, and especially the long journey is, is gonna be tough as well. But I think we've had a lot of preparation now, um, obviously with the kicking trophy um, that allowed us to find our feet a bit. But no, we're really looking forward to uh, getting the season underway now and being able to play with this group of guys who are out there with, um, I think the the two teams that are playing this weekend is really going to, is really going to help us like see how we match up with some, some of the higher ranked teams in uh, division one in the past couple of years. So um, we look to make some noise this year. Yeah, I think, Definitely making noise so really important, and it's such an interesting season because you've got obviously Solent, a dynasty of old, they seem to have crumbled, they, they might be down their vouts, but it's not the same pedigree players. What's uh, some of the things you guys talked about behind the scenes and maybe expectations for this season? Um, so obviously, with us coming up from Division Two last year, um, we really want to stay in Division One, I. I think that. Uh, first and foremost is the main goal um, and having a team in Manchester I think there's a Division 1 team needs to be in Manchester um, I think it's a it's a great place to have a Division 1 team especially with the way that the Giants are looking this year as well I think um, the basketball in Manchester can can really take off in these next couple of years um, and having a, a Division 1 team and also a BBL team in Manchester who are both doing being successful it can be really key for, for younger players in Manchester to have some sort of um, goal to reach and, and to look forward to as well. So, um, no, I think it's it's great for us uh, to have a team back in Division 1 and um, we're just going to take it one game at a time, try and finish, try and win every single game we can. Um, we're going to play hard, but the main, the, first and foremost, the main goal is to try and stay in Division 1. I think that sounds a really good idea. And I think definitely, I think that's there's, there's not too ambitious, but I think it's definitely achievable. You've got some, you know, Yourself, Miss Minister X, Essex, uh, and maybe Newcastle, they could all be in that mix. So that, you know, definitely survival is definitely possible. You obviously got the big road head, uh, double header away trip. Have you guys sort of decided how you get in there? Who's going to be looking after the music? Who's on snack duty? Has some of that been finalised yet? Um. So on Saturday, we're taking a minibus down. Uh, our Magic's, uh, we have a minibus. So we're going to take that down on Saturday because obviously it's a pretty long journey. I think about three and a half, four hours down to, to TVC. So that's going to be a bit of a journey. I don't think we've yet um, figured out who's going to be on uh, on music and who's going to be on snack duty, but um, I'm sure that'll, that'll come along with time. Um, and on Sunday, I think we're going to go down in cars because we have a lot of the junior teams who have some games who are a bit further away than we do. I think some National Cup games have got coming up. So... Um, we're just going to, because obviously we have a lot of team, guys on the team who can drive, I think we're going to bite the bullet and just take some cars down on Sunday. Yeah, it's definitely a commitment for the guys because it's not just about you guys playing, you, you know, you've got guys who've got a hell additional role getting you guys there. As well as your games, we've got other games in the league. On Saturday, you've got Newcastle hosting Solon, Nottingham versus Love for Essex for Spinster, Tez Valley playing yourself, so we already mentioned, Hebel Bradford, Worthing and London. What are your thoughts about Love for this season? A lot of change, and you know they've been an established D one side for a while, but maybe a few pieces short. What are your thoughts on them so far? 
Um, from what I've seen of Loughborough so far, they're looking really good this year. Um, obviously, they brought back, managed to bring back Harrison and a lot of the guys that they had back last year. However, they have added some some new players as well, which is definitely going to help them. They think the, the the big guy Dion, um, he's going to be a big help because I think we struggled with um with some size last year when I was playing for Loughborough, um, and the American guard as well. I think he'll be good for them. He he looks he looks like he's good and he can score the ball as well. So, no, I think they're I think they're going to have a really good season this season. I think they can definitely challenge some of the top teams in the league this year, and I think they can they can finish a bit higher than what people expect them to. So. I wish them all the best with Loughborough and obviously I've got a lot of friends who still play there and I still go down to Loughborough and see them guys as well. So it'll be exciting to see how they do this year for sure. Oh yeah, no, I can definitely imagine you penciled that one in the diary straight away as soon as you saw it coming out and phoning your friends saying safe date, make sure you come and see me drop 30 on you or whatever the free chat may be. Yeah. Um, obviously in the kitchen trophy you had a little bit of exposure to Bradford who themselves not Jordan Wheeler was really excited for the lead. What have you made of them so far from maybe you played the kick in and other sort of thoughts you might have? Um, Bradford look really solid. Um, I think Bradford have always been a pretty solid team. Uh, maybe not a team that always pushed towards the, the, the top four, but always a team that are really solid in, in Division One. They have a lot of guys who continue to re sign there every single year. And I think with the addition of Jordan, who was at Giants last year, I think they're they're really going to be pushing for a, for a higher seed than they have done in the in the past. I think, um, in my personal opinion, Jordan should still be playing in the BBL, but I think it's great that he has made the decision to come down and play in Division One. I think it's going to be great for Division One. It's going to up the level of the league as well. Um, so no, I think they're going to, from what we've seen in them in the Kick King Trophy, they're a good team. I think we matched up with them pretty well, um, and it was a pretty close game throughout, but. Um, they have some good players and some really experienced guys, so I think they can they can do pretty well this year. And you know, obviously, looking at what is the most important thing at the moment, I see it one game at a time. You got the Derby and TBC. TBC looked quite well pre-season. They obviously lost Hakim, they've lost Charles Atkins, they've lost one or two of their bigs, but got some exciting guards. What has coach got you thinking about in terms of maybe how to nullify their threats, but also, you know, maybe cause a shock because. I think there's a fair game there. Yeah. Um, so from what our, from what Pete has been speaking about, um, I think we haven't seen them shoot the ball great so far. Um, so that's definitely something we'll be looking at. Um, but to be honest, we're just focused on us right now. Um, we're just taking we're taking a look at ourselves after every single game. It's not really been about what the the opposition are doing. It's been about making sure that we're play, playing our style and our brand of basketball and making sure we're doing things the right way. And hopefully that will trend in a, in a positive direction as the season goes forward. And what do you feel like, without giving away too much secret potion, is sort of what people can expect from watching you guys on the floor this season? Um, I think we're going to be a pretty exciting team. Um, we're looking to get up and down the floor pretty quickly. Um, I think we're going to want to be pushing the ball in transition. We have a lot of guys who um, are quick and get down the floor, could score in transition. We have a, a couple of shooting threats as well. Um, our big guys are all pretty mobile, so they can get up and down the floor. They can rim run. So I think we're going to be excited, an exciting team to watch. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people like watching that style of basketball, like, pretty quick up and down, um, getting a lot of shots up, a couple of threes. Um, see a couple of dunks here and there so I think no it's definitely going to be exciting to watch yeah no I think every time we, I see you on the floor I know you like to shoot the three you're, you're very good elite shoot and you know you definitely the sort of random bars you talk about does seem to fit the guys you have young energetic athletic guys I think you know really give those opposition reason to think about in terms of the bigger pitch I know we sort of talk about what you think might happen for Manchester but have you sort of had a thought about who might win the title. You'd obviously Sona have that for Pete, but a whole new group of guys. Obviously, obviously if Worthing win anything, I need our Cy Air for win this medal because he's basically recruited Model Blaine's team, paying for my All-Stars game, also Hamill, I mean, everyone else. What are your thoughts on the, the title race this year? Um, I think it's going to be an interesting one this year. I think, uh, obviously, Solon for the past couple of years have been the front runners. And I know some teams have maybe beat them in the regular season, but 
Um, when it comes to the end of the season, I think Salton have always been the most experienced team um, and they were together for a pretty long period of time as well. So um, they had a great coach down there, Matt Guyman, and also they had a, a lot of experienced guys. Um, but no, I think it's definitely going to be different this year. Um, the way that Worthen are looking this year, obviously, as you said, they recruited a lot of guys from Newcastle um, and a lot of guys from, from Solent as well. So they're going to be like mega experienced um, and it's going to be interesting to see how they put all their pieces together and how they play as a team. Um, but when you look to the other side, you look at Hemel as well, like Hemel are looking really good uh, with the, obviously them signing uh, Silla from TVC. He's a big pickup for them and uh, managing to take to, to John and I think they have a definitely have a chance of winning the title as well. So, yeah, the pair are definitely on it. I think it was something like I was watching the game against Reading, and I think by the end of the third quarter, Johnson and Silla combined were only four points short of Reading's tally. They were definitely eating large meals there. They were getting their buckets in. We talked a bit about Worthing's recruiting from Newcastle. You would obviously met them in the Chicken Trophy. What do you think of them from that one game? I know it may be not much to go on, but like I said, they've got quite a new group of players. What were your thoughts? No, yeah, it was it's definitely different uh, playing the Newcastle team without all the American guys that they had last year. Um, obviously, there's a, there's a few similar guys who have stayed on. Obviously, I'm assuming they're at Newcastle University. Um, so I think they'll be solid. Um, they're definitely people like we lost to them on a buzzer beat of three, which was it was a tough loss. Uh, but I think as a team, we thought that we should have definitely won that game. I think if we if we could do it over again, we would have won that game. Um, just I think it was our inexperience and our lack of um, time together. Uh, but I think on any other day, we win that game. So Newcastle, they'll be solid, but I think we're definitely the better team. Oh, that's good to, good to hear fighting talk there, especially sort of regional-ish um, rivalry there. And, you know, you obviously at the start of the show, you talked a bit about coming home, being an experienced player. Obviously, that must be as a big role reversal compared to maybe previous years. In terms of your own personal development, what are some of your goals, maybe on and off court, that you're looking to achieve this year with Manchester? Um, so I'm looking just to have a really good year this year, um, just overall uh, on and off the court. Um, I'm doing some coaching with the Magic as well, um, so helping develop some of their junior guys um, and some of their academy as well. So I'm going to be helping out there. Um, so I'm hoping to just bring as much as experience as I can that I've learned from my time in Leicester and bringing that to Magic as well. Um, hopefully having a good season with the, with the Magic and winning as many games as we can. Um, but also off the court, helping the junior teams continue to win and have that winning mindset that they've had for a, a long period of time. Um, arguably the best junior programme in the country. So I think uh, bringing my experience back from being with, with Loughborough in Division 1 and, and Leicester in the BBR could definitely help some of their younger guys uh, progress a bit quicker than maybe they would have if I wasn't there. So that's something I'm really looking forward to this year, seeing the guys progress. And I remember sort of around well, this time last year, you were saying about how you were excited to join Leicester. And it was really good to see someone be proud to sort of say, hey, I'm not taking the US route. I'm, I'm sticking here with Leicester. It, obviously, you probably mixed emotions for your time there. But what are some of like, the key reflections you had that sort of reinforced that was a really good idea? And, um, you know, something that you know, made you feel like, yes, I did the right thing. Yeah, I think... Um... A lot of kids' dreams is always to go to America. Um, but I think when my time came for me to maybe make that decision, I think uh, Leicester gave me a good offer and I think it was the best for me. Uh, if I was going to go back and do it again, I would do the same thing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't end up going to America. I just don't think America was best fit for me. I think a lot of kids sometimes um, say they want to go to America and then they get there and maybe it's not the right thing, the uh, right decision for them. Um, which is fair. Some people go for fear and some people go for the basketball, but I feel like what I wanted to achieve with basketball was I was able to do it over here. Um, and obviously I'm close to family and stuff, so I can get, I get to see them more often and all that, all that good stuff as well. Um, but no, um, I think kids should definitely look at universities in, in the UK when they're, when they're making the decision about going to the States as well. Cause sometimes if you go, even if you just go for a couple of visits to a few universities, you might think, oh, like, this is really good. Like, 
I think I can really fit in well here. And there's a lot of teams that I think, especially Division One now, are looking for up and coming talent from uh, junior programs to come and make a difference at D1 as well. Um, obviously, we have Ben Brown and Matthew Goodwin both playing for us this year. Um, so I know Ben already committed to going to the States, but he's going to be a big, a big piece for us this year. Um, and I think a lot of Division One teams should be looking at helping some of these junior guys progress a bit more and being able to give them the opportunity to play at the Division One level. I was fortunate enough that that Mark, Jeremy, and Liam Jefferson gave me that opportunity when I was in my third year at Charnwood um, to play Division One. And I think that was huge for me that 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 year, I think my third year I really came on being with the Leicester Riders as well. Um, so I would never have got that opportunity if I'd gone to America, being around some guys who on the Riders team had played at high major Division One schools. Um, and I would never have got that if I'd gone to maybe a, a Division Two school or a JUCO school in the States. So I think the experience has really helped me. Oh, I 100% agree. I, I feel like, especially for, when you talk about people, as, you know, we, we talk about them as players, but as human beings that with the limited life experience at 18, 19, who have been in that system maybe five, six years, have built up those connections and yeah. then trade it all to America where they're just a small fish in a big pond. It, it, it's not always right. I think you've got to have a certain level of mentality and you also got to have those right people around you say, hey, this is a really good fit for you. Okay, it might not look glamorous, but actually you'll get... And I think it's such a tough tough decision to make and it's great to see that you're progressing where you are and you know we definitely see players come back to D1 like Blake Bowman and other guys who he went to the States didn't work out for them came back to NBL D1 it's a very good level to sort of push on yeah. having spent time with BBL and obviously seeing what great stuff they have behind the scenes 777 London Lions treat NBA talent we've got a bit more hype behind BBL train See, does that make it an even better proposition to consider again? Maybe if you know those clubs take their interest in you, maybe at the end of this season, we see with Carl Jimenez, Luke Basumbru, and they make the jump. Would you still want to make the jump, or would you be saying, Okay, I've done that now? Maybe I look at Europe or other things. What are some of the thoughts that are in your head? Um, no, I think my I think my main goal definitely is to, to play in the BBL. Um, I think with obviously the Brexit situation and us um, make it much more difficult for us to go over to Europe now um, with the passport situation, I think the BBL is a really good option. Um, I think it's the time that I spent in the BBL, I really enjoyed it. And it's, I feel like we don't give it as enough credit as it deserves. I think it is actually a really good level. There's guys who play in the BBL who go abroad and, and sometimes struggle at some, um, some levels that are lower than the BBL. So I think people don't really give it the recognition it deserves. Uh, there's a lot of high level guys, obviously with, with London this year, they have a lot of, um, a couple of NBA level guys. Um, so I think year on year, the, the talent in the BBL continues to grow and the, the level of basketball seems to be getting better and better. Um, and hopefully with the money that 777 have brought in, um, it continues to grow and hopefully we can make this more of a, a worldwide uh, organization. Your speed is required, and I really appreciate it. This is deep stuff as well. Just you know, you're going for that journey, and I'm really happy to behind you. Wish you all the best. Before you go, let's let's finish on a light topic. I know you've got some jokes as well. I know you've got some guys who probably play for the highlight reels. This week in training, or maybe last few weeks, training, has there been a real blue pill? So I get dunked on or ankle braiders, what have been some of the highlights of training but maybe people don't get to see even if the live stream's on? Um, I think our big guy who actually hasn't been hasn't been licensed for us uh, the past couple of weeks in the kicking trophy, Keegan, he's had some big dunks in practice. Um, he's a really athletic big guy. He's about 6'9", runs up and down the floor really well, high flyer. He's he's had some pretty uh, exciting dunks in practice and stuff. It's quite easy coming off the pick and roll with him and being able to throw to him. Um, so no, he's he's definitely someone. Another guy who you should look out for this year is going to definitely have some highlights and so definitely going to dunk on a few people this year. So I'm sure BBL fix is getting ready for streams, clip that and more. Thank you for spending your Friday night, especially you've got two busy journeys this weekend. I don't envy you at all. 
I wish you guys all the best. It's great to see Magic back in this. Great to see you back happy and smiling. All the best. Thanks for coming on the show, and I wish you all the best of the season. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. And thank you guys for tuning in. We're back there next week for more shows. Stay safe. Stay well. I'll see you all soon. Bye from me and Greg.